So I've got a lot of projects filmed right now, and I haven't been sure what order to release them in, so I decided to hold a YouTube poll and sort of let you guys decide. Once I got all the votes in, the clear winner was hexavalent iron, or iron in the 6 plus oxidation state. Now, the name in the poll was admittedly vague, and more specifically what this video is going to be about is the element iron, and some of the oxidation states you can easily put it into. I've covered oxidation states before in a video on vanadium, but for a quick refresher, an oxidation state is basically an atom's degree of electron deficit. Electrons have a negative charge, so if something has a plus one oxidation state, it means that it's lost one electron. Group 1 and 2 metals can only have one oxidation state, but transition metals like iron can have several, which is what this video is all about. Anyway, to go ahead and get into it, iron is a pretty reactive metal that can be easily dissolved by hydrochloric acid forming the green salt, iron 2 chloride. Due to its relatively high reactivity, iron is usually not found in its pure form, and is usually encountered as an alloy with carbon which is used to increase its strength and durability. This alloy is called steel, and since I'm dissolving steel wool here, I'll need to filter off the flecks of carbon that are released. Once the filtering is complete, I'm left with this light green solution of iron 2 chloride. More concentrated solutions of iron 2 chloride are much more intense emerald green, and if the solution is strong enough, beautiful iron 2 chloride crystals will begin to form. These square crystals are clear, and they turn white when they're heated. Anyway, when I add some hydrogen peroxide to my dilute solution of iron 2 chloride, it becomes oxidized to iron 3 chloride. This is iron in its plus 3 state, and iron 3 chloride can appear yellow or orange in solution, and black when dehydrated. It's a good oxidizer that's pretty hygroscopic and very difficult to crystallize. Next, I go ahead and pour my iron 3 chloride solution into a beaker and add some 2 molar sodium hydroxide to form the insoluble iron 3 hydroxide, which is a dark brown solid that's sometimes used to treat iron deficiency. This is then transferred to another beaker once most of the water is filtered off, and then I begin to slowly add a solution of 10% sodium hypochlorite under constant stirring and aggressive heating. This will oxidize the iron to its plus 4, plus 5, and finally its plus 6 hexavalent state. Inorganic iron compounds in the 4 and 5 states are highly unstable, but the hexavalent ferrate ion is decently stable in strongly alkaline solutions. The ferrate ion is actually one of the strongest known water-soluble oxidizers, and is significantly more oxidizing than the permanganate ion. It even looks somewhat similar to permanganate in solution, but in my opinion it's more redshifted and notably less vibrant. Now, I tried to show my sample of sodium ferrate alongside the plus 2 and plus 3 samples, but it's really concentrated and too dark to really see the color, and it decomposed when I tried diluting it. Eventually, I figured out that it could be diluted with a 5 molar sodium hydroxide solution, and so here you can see the color a lot better. I spent some time experimenting on this sodium ferrate because it's not really a compound I've ever heard of or encountered until I started this project. I really wanted to try precipitating this as a stable salt, and eventually I figured out that if I added a solution of barium acetate, it would be precipitated as barium ferrate. Upon addition of the barium acetate solution, very fine particles of barium ferrate immediately began to crash out. This lightened up the solution a lot, and it kind of looked pink, and they began to quickly settle to the bottom. Once I gave it a while to settle, I tried to vacuum filter this to collect my barium ferrate, but the particles it formed were so tiny that it was a very, very slow process. Eventually, it all passed through, and you can see that this is somewhat contaminated by barium hydroxide. And this can be avoided by simply using a stoichiometric quantity of barium, but I didn't weigh or measure anything I used in this video. This was scraped into a dish and dried under vacuum desiccation for a while, and here you can see my barium ferrate, which represents iron in its plus 6 oxidation state. Anyway, these represent the only three stable inorganic iron oxidation states I've been able to isolate, but before I end this video, I thought it would be cool to show two more reactions you can do with iron. For the first one, the addition of iron 3 chloride, or any iron 3 salt, to a solution of potassium thiocyanate will form a blood red complex, which makes sense considering your blood gets its color from an iron complex. This reaction is used to determine the presence of iron in a sample, and if the sample is really dirty, you can actually extract this into an organic layer to see it better. 
You can also add some iron 3 chloride or again any iron 3 salt to a solution of potassium ferrocyanide. This forms a bright blue complex that's used as a pigment called Prussian blue. I've actually made this pigment before on this channel and I've got a video coming up where I'm going to make it again so keep a lookout for that if you're interested. So yeah, those are the other two complexes you can make. Do keep in mind those are both iron in the plus 3 oxidation state and not new oxidation states. I just thought it would be cool to make them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I do plan on making more videos like this for a couple more transition metals. If you're interested, you can keep a lookout for those. And as always, I want to give a shout out to my patrons whose generous contributions support this channel and help me continue to make these videos. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time.